All right. I don't know what time you have. I have like 5:21. I think we can. Uh, 29. I think we can get started. What do you think? Yes. Awesome. Uh, thank you all for being here uh, and attending the last session of the day, the last session of these awesome two days of conferences. I hope you had a good time. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was my first time. And uh, today, tonight, we're going to talk about building hypermedia APIs in JavaScript. But uh, before we get started, I would like to know a bit more about you and which kind of background you're coming from. So, who is using an uh, API in this room? Yes, that's better. That's <laughs> perfect. You don't build stuff yourself, you use other people that, is, that does it better than you. That's great. Uh, have you heard of a hypermedia APIs? Yeah? A couple of you? Have you ever built one? Less. Uh, ah, okay, cool. So, Hopefully in this talk we get a, a bit of overview of uh, what are hypermedia APIs and why you should build one and how to build that easily in JavaScript. Uh, just a bit of my, uh, about myself before we get started. Uh, I'm working for Threescale. Uh, we are an API management company. So I eat API, I code APIs, I dream APIs. All the times we have APIs everywhere. Uh, and we're helping companies building their developer program. Uh, I'm a really API freak. Uh, before getting into uh, Threescale, I was going to a lot of hackathons, uh, work with different APIs and different schemas, and I have seen bad and I've seen good stuff. And today my job is to make it uh, make everybody going on the right path. Um, my real title title is hacker in residence, which means that I have to build and break stuff and create new projects. And this uh, topic and this uh, whole um, talk is based on a project I've built, so I'm going to talk to you about this in the end. And finally, my stack recently uh, moved from the Ruby world to Node.js and specifically Meteor. Um, so that's, that's a bit of my background. So let's get started with Hypermedia 101. Um, if you're not familiar with it, uh, I can tell you that you're really already using Hypermedia APIs, but you don't know it yet. Uh, you may have noticed uh, PayPal, uh, GitHub, Udall, and many other companies are already uh, building APIs are based on the hypermedia format. What, what are the, the core values of hypermedias? Uh, it's something that's discoverable. Discoverable means that you can understand the API without reading the documentation. Uh, if you hit the first uh, endpoint, like the api.domain.com slash and nothing, then from there you should be able to discover what's happening in the API and what the API should do. That makes uh, the second core value. The API is machine readable. A program can understand the API. You don't need someone else to do it and understand what are the, the parameters, what are the stuff that should be passed. Everything should be written in this uh, first endpoint. And in the end, how are you doing this? You do this using links. So think about the experience you have when you go on a browser. You go on the slash domain first. And then you will go from there to one other link that will give you on slash link one, and then we'll go slash link one, slash link two, and then to other links. That's exactly uh, the same experience you will have with this API. Uh, you go on the first link, and then you will go through uh, others. It's your browser experience in your API. Uh, an example, uh, I don't know if you can read it clearly, that's the example of uh, if you hit api.github.com, uh, instead of rendering uh, the HTML, uh, page as they were the documentation here they give you uh, URLs to uh, other resources uh, so from there you can go on events and you will find all the events uh, you can go on users emojis all the cool stuff that github is doing and you will have the same kind of behavior in other resources so you'll go through all the links um, let's take an example and compare the the rest approach and the hypermedia approach so we're going to build a building and we're going to try to descri describe a, a building uh, into uh, an API. So in this example that I've seen another conference that was in July and I thought it gives a, a nice overview of why you should choose between the two designs. So in a building you will have rooms and you will have doors. If we do that easily, we say each room has an ID, each door ha has, a, has an ID. And now you have to make relations because doors are, uh, belonging to rooms and uh, 
you want to know which doors are in which rooms. So if you take an arrest approach, that could be one way of doing this. You get the room ID and you do slash doors and you will find all the doors and if you slash doors slash ID, you have the corresponding door of this corresponding room. That's, that's doable. But doors or rooms are not enough to describe a whole building. You also have hallways. And now you want to know the, on which hallway this room from this, with, with this door is going to. And you have a huge uh, set of resources that are all mixed and it's going to be hard to have access to this information. And that's where uh, hypermedia can help you. When I see that, usually, uh, <laughs> I had to put a panda in this presentation. I'm a really panda fanboy and that's uh, exactly the feeling I have when I see this type of API. So let's put some hypermedia in it. Uh, with hypermedia, uh, we saw that you have links, but you can so uh, you can uh, you're gonna add a relation. So that's what we have here, uh, the rel uh, property. That will be the relation you have between the two objects. So if we go on the room, you will have a relation to another object, and uh, the relation will be a door and a link to the door. Uh, and so you can add as many uh, relation and links uh, objects to this door uh, to this room, and you will. Uh, you then find them. It will be uh, the opposite relation in the door object. You will have an entry to a room. And finally, on the hallways, uh, you will have a floor relation and uh, you can make doors and rooms and uh, all that stuff. In this case, um, the, the link and the way the, the, like, how the link look like, looks like, it doesn't really matter because we only care about the resource. Uh, it also doesn't really matter because, uh, I mean, that's something I forgot to, to mention. Uh, the, the good thing about hypermedia APIs is they are uh, easy to maintain. Uh, it's a link, so you can always uh, point this link to someone, something else. Uh, and the relation will still be there. Uh, the, the link and the, the object it's pointing to, you can change it. And you can also add more stuff. So if uh, a room has other relations, you can still add stuff, but the doors will still be around. I hope you can understand that and I'm not messing up around. Um, yes. Now how are you going to do that with uh, your uh, app? There is this thing that's called hate OIS or uh, no one really know how to pronounce this. Uh, but it's a type of hypermedia APIs uh, and it stands for hypermedia as an engine of application state. And it's a, it's a design. So it's a, it's a format that you should respect to uh, rent for your API and it's the easiest you can implement on your existing um, existing API. Uh, it works with Express and you are basically going to change the JSON response to add links. Here is uh, an example if we follow the same uh, principle of the building we had. Uh, you retrieve the, the data so you retrieve the name of the room, you retrieve the ID and then that would be the relations. You have a link array so uh, a links array and in this uh, array you will find all the relations and all the possibilities you can do from this room. Um, the, the good thing about this, uh, it, tell, it tells you what it's possible to do when you are on this endpoint and on this endpoint what you could do is going to another door and f uh, going to a door and find the doors. Uh, pretty easy to understand and pretty easy to implement as well. But you can go further. There is a framework for that. As it says on my T-shirt, there's an API for that. Uh, what is it called? It's called Fortune GS, uh, and it's an open source project uh, written in Node. And as I assume you know how to use Node, and here is how to describe your API. So in this case, the, the example is a it's a st pet store, and you will have owners and you have pets. Uh, you describe the the the, the pet uh, the person resource with its name and its age. And uh, obviously, a person can have many pets. So the relation pets is an array of pets. A pet is a, has a name and an age and can only have one owner. So in this case, you have one relation uh, person. And that's it. That's how you have defined your hypermedia API. Doing this with 14GS, it will uh, generate all those routes. A get, a post, uh, on each resource, uh, a git push, patch, delete, uh, and maybe options, I think, also added options. 
uh, for each resource. And if you don't want to leave your users having access to this, you can override it and say we only want to get, we only want to put. But uh, as simple as that it is to define, you will already, you will come with all those routes already made. Here is the, the example we have. Um, so comparing to what we saw with Hato S, uh, Fortune GS is using JSON API uh, format, which is another format of uh, hypermedia APIs. So if you remember the XKCD comic, there is uh, something about formats, 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 and it is true. Uh, hypermedia is still at the beginning. Uh, like people are still trying different stuff, so they have different way of formatting it. Uh, and we don't have any clear winner at the moment. So, but the 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 idea is the same: links and relation between links. So in this case, you will see that it's formatted in different way. You have the people, uh, that's the resource, and the links pets and the ID uh, and then common to all the all the resource in the end you have the links people dot pet and uh, in brackets uh, you like um, you will see the the format of the URL and which type of value you should put in it in this case people dot pet so if you go up on the data you do people dot pet and you can like people dot links dot pet and you will find the corresponding ID so that's the way to uh, go through all the links. Uh, so that's how it works on pet, on people, and on the other side, you will have the how it works on the owner. And again, uh, everything is made through the first uh, the first uh, code we we written, we wrote. My English is broken. Um, and you will, s uh, if you like, if you add a pet to a person. Is going to be listed as pets on this person, but then the first person will be listed as an owner on the other side. So it works in both ways. Uh, relations are uh, working in both ways. What did we do with this? I oh, know. First, what what is coming from uh, with? Uh, you will have adapters for uh, all kind of uh, databases, uh, so you don't really have to change your stack. Those uh, databases are common. It comes with all the routing that we saw. It does the database interaction for you. Uh, you can add other logic, so if, uh, like before, after uh, the resources. So when you create uh, before, when you uh, uh, delete after, depends on what you want. The only thing that it doesn't come with is the authentication. So you have to build your own, but it's pretty easy to have examples. Uh, so if you want to add your headers to authenticate your users, that's on your own. And it's maintained. That's a good thing also about this. Uh, the, the maintainer is reactive. So what did we do with this? We built an API based game. So it comes with a, a funny story. My, uh, my boss one day came on to the office and said, all right, we, I have this domain. It's called apibunny.com. I don't know what to do with it. And we found out that Easter was a week away, so we decided to build a, an API game because we know how to do APIs and we have apibunny.com, so we're going to do some, something with it. Um, so it's pretty easy. We didn't say anything. That was the only thing you had. So that's the only clue you have to start the game. And if you're following well, even if I probably understandable, that's a hypermedia type of API. And uh, you have a, you have a maze, and you have a start. You, you can see links that start, uh, and you can see it's a cell. So you can imagine that's the beginning of a maze, and there's a start point of a maze. So if we go through this URL, API bunny slash cells slash start start, I already have it here. And what it, it gives you, it's uh, a cell object with a uh, name, an ID, an abandoned page. If you're if you're already abandoned on the first uh, cell, then you're not really uh, courageous, but you can still abandon. And you have two uh, possibilities, go east or go back to the maze. In this case, if you want to go in the maze, you only have one possibility. And if we look at uh, how you should go east, you follow apibunny.com slash sales slash sales dot east. So we get the east ID, replace it here, and boom, we are on another cell. And here you have other options. You can go back east or you can continue west. And that's how you go through the maze and find the game, like find the end of the game. Um, 
in this may, in this game, people didn't know how many cells we had, and uh, we were all about trying to get them find the solution, not manually um, as I'm doing because it takes a lot of time, but uh, using um, uh, algorithm. So if we go back to the um, to the presentation, I just want to show you a couple of uh, problems we we run into. So as I told you. Um, Relations could be uh, are going both ways in a uh, fortune GS. So obviously, when you think about this, if something is north, then the opposite uh, will be south, and these two links would be uh, related in that way. But in the case of a maze, that doesn't work very well, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, so that's an uh, easy maze. Uh, so on the the cell number four, you want to have west will be cell one, east will be cell seven, and south will be cell five. But in the way fortune in JS is defined, when you're doing this with the inverse relation, um, it's going to be messed up because uh, the cell that is at the east of, like the, the east cell of number one will be four. And if you do the inverse, west of four will be one. But then if you do cell, the, the east of seven is four, and then west of four is seven. And so on the way you define the males, the, the maze, then it's going to be a bit messed up. So what we did instead, uh, and that's something, uh, that's a bug we, we reported to the, the maintainer, uh, there is a way to, uh, to put inverse nil, and then you will have to make your relationship yourself. So it works well in many different cases. In the case of a maze, this inverse could be a bit tricky. Uh, and that's a bug we found working on this project. Um, another thing we found that's uh, a bit tricky, uh, the last sale of the maze, uh, we were asking people to do a post request. And uh, on uh, the JSON API format, the post requests are a bit tricky. And they don't look as a the normal thing. You will first have to put the resource and um, put, the, put the parameter into an array. So people get a bit uh, uh, Confused by this, but they just had to read the documentation, and we just had to, we had a link in the bottom of the page to give some hints. Uh, in the end, uh, we had uh, thousands of players in a couple of days. Uh, we had a lot of people who tried, who went on the page. Uh, only 44 winners, so it means that it was complicated enough to uh, make it interesting. And around four, uh, around 10 people have shared their solution. Uh, we had someone that wrote a solution to solve this maze in a, in a tweet. It's a bash script that you can paste in a tweet. So 140 characters to solve a maze. Uh, that's pretty fun. Uh, you can find uh, the, the, whole, um, the whole API Bunny project on GitHub. We wrote a blog post about how we did all the stuff. And uh, it's basically what I just said. And uh, make, make sure to be ready for next Easter because a V2 is coming and uh, we're going to make uh, make it a bit more complicated. Uh, if you're interested by uh, learning more about three, uh, three seconds, about uh, hypermedia APIs, uh, we have something we call the API Codex. So if you remember the Pokedex with Pokemon, when all the information about Pokemons is the same, but for APIs. Uh, so you have all uh, a lot of articles about uh, what's going on in the API world. Uh, I rec really recommend you to read the, the book uh, about uh, and uh, what uh, Hadmundson did for Hypermedia and his uh, book about REST APIs. There's also, also another book, uh, Designing Hypermedia APIs. And you can also attend other conferences, uh, API Days and API Strat. There's in Europe, there, there are some in, uh, in, uh, in the US. In the API Craft Meetup, there is a local chapter in San Francisco and an awesome Google group where you can learn more about how to design APIs. Uh, well, you can find me on GitHub and uh, Twitter. And if you have any question about APIs in general, Hypermedia, or how to do that in JavaScript, feel free. I hope you had a good time and enjoy the rest of your night.